Welcome to ASVAB Tutoring. In this video, we will go over 15 questions of anatomy and physiology for the HESI A2 test preparation. To practice more, download the HESI test prep from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. Question 1. Muscle atrophy, a decrease in muscle size, can be caused by A. Regular strength training B. Disuse or inactivity C. A balanced diet D. Proper sleep The answer is B. Muscle atrophy occurs when muscles shrink due to disuse or inactivity, which leads to a loss of muscle mass and strength. When muscles are not regularly used, the body conserves energy by breaking down muscle tissue. This can happen due to prolonged bed rest, sedentary lifestyle, or immobilization of a limb. Regular strength training, a balanced diet, and proper sleep are crucial for maintaining muscle mass and preventing atrophy. Question 2. When lifting weights, eccentric contractions refer to the A. Concentric contraction phase B. Lengthening phase of the muscle under tension C. Isometric contraction phase D. Relaxation phase of the muscle The answer is B. Eccentric contractions refer to the lengthening phase of the muscle under tension. During this type of contraction, the muscle elongates while still producing force, often as it resists a load. For example, when lowering a weight during a bicep curl, the bicep's muscle lengthens while controlling the descent. This phase is essential for muscle strengthening and is different from the concentric phase, where the muscle shortens. Question 3. Electromyography, EMG, is a diagnostic tool that measures a. Muscle strength b. Electrical activity of muscles c. Muscle mass d. Muscle tone The answer is b. Electromyography, EMG, is a diagnostic tool that measures the electrical activity of muscles. It involves inserting a needle electrode into the muscle or placing surface electrodes on the skin to detect the electrical signals that muscles generate during contraction. EMG is used to assess the health of muscles and the nerve cells that control them, helping to diagnose conditions affecting muscle function and nerve transmission. Question 4. Myopathies are a group of diseases that affect a. The nervous system b. The skeletal system c. The muscular system d. The circulatory system The answer is c. Myopathies are a group of diseases that affect the muscular system. These disorders are characterized by abnormalities in muscle fibers, leading to muscle weakness, cramps, stiffness, and in some cases, muscle wasting. Myopathies can be inherited or acquired and often result from issues in muscle metabolism, inflammation, or structural defects within the muscle tissue. They primarily impact the muscles that control voluntary movement. Question 5. Cramps are sudden, involuntary muscle contractions that can be caused by a. Dehydration b. Electrolyte imbalance c. Muscle fatigue d. All of the above The answer is d. Cramps are sudden, involuntary muscle contractions that can be caused by dehydration, electrolyte imbalance, and muscle fatigue. These factors disrupt the normal function of muscles, leading to painful and unexpected contractions. Dehydration reduces fluid levels, affecting muscle function, while an imbalance of electrolytes like potassium, calcium, and sodium can interfere with muscle signaling. Muscle fatigue also contributes to cramps by overexerting the muscle fibers. Question 6. For a muscle cell to contract and generate force, which of the following is necessary for muscle contraction? A. Myosin and actin filaments only. B. Oxygen and glucose only. 
C. Calcium ions and ADP. D. Nerve impulse alone. The answer is C. For a muscle cell to contract and generate force, calcium ions and ATP are necessary. Calcium ions trigger the interaction between myosin and actin filaments by binding to troponin, which allows myosin heads to attach to actin. ADP provides the energy needed for the myosin heads to pull on the actin filaments, causing muscle contraction. ADP is also essential for detaching the myosin heads, allowing the cycle to continue and the muscle to contract repeatedly. Question 7. Slow twitch muscle fibers are well suited for A. Sprinting B. Weightlifting C. Marathons D. Jumping The answer is C. Slow twitch muscle fibers are well suited for marathons and other endurance activities. These fibers are designed for prolonged, steady contractions and are highly resistant to fatigue. They have a rich supply of blood vessels, myoglobin, and mitochondria, which allow them to efficiently use oxygen for energy production. This makes slow twitch fibers ideal for activities that require sustained effort over long periods, such as long distance running. Question 8. There are three main types of muscle tissue. Which is not one of them? A. Smooth muscle. B. Cardiac muscle. C. Striated voluntary muscle. D. Skeletal muscle. The answer is C. The three main types of muscle tissue are smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and skeletal muscle. Striated voluntary muscle is not a distinct type of muscle tissue, instead, it refers to skeletal muscle, which is striated, has a banded appearance, and under voluntary control. Smooth muscle is found in the walls of internal organs and is involuntary, while cardiac muscle is also striated but found only in the heart and is involuntary. Question 9. Smooth muscle tissue is found in A. Biceps and triceps. B. The walls of hollow organs, blood vessels, lymph vessels, and the eyes. C. Only iris of the eye. D. Bone joints throughout the body. The answer is B. Smooth muscle tissue is found in the walls of hollow organs, blood vessels, lymph vessels, and the eyes. Unlike skeletal muscle, smooth muscle is involuntary and does not have striations. It plays a crucial role in various bodily functions, such as controlling the movement of food through the digestive system, regulating blood flow by contracting and relaxing blood vessels, and adjusting the size of the pupil in the eye. Question 10. A single skeletal muscle cell is called a a. Neuron b. Muscle fiber c. Tendon d. Ligament The answer is b. A single skeletal muscle cell is called a muscle fiber. Muscle fibers are long, cylindrical cells that make up skeletal muscles. Each fiber is packed with myofibrils, which contain the actin and myosin filaments responsible for muscle contraction. Muscle fibers are multinucleated and can vary in length, contributing to the muscle's ability to generate force and movement. Neurons, tendons, and ligaments are different structures with distinct functions. Question 11. Muscles are attached to bones by tough, fibrous tissues, called a. Cartilage b. Tendons c. Ligaments d. Fascia The answer is b. Muscles are attached to bones by tough, fibrous tissues, called tendons. Tendons are strong, flexible structures that transmit the force generated by muscle contractions to the bones, facilitating movement. Cartilage provides cushioning and support at joints, ligaments connect bones to each other, and fascia is connective tissue that surrounds muscles and organs. Question 12. 
A muscle that causes movement in one direction is called the A. Antagonist B. Agonist C. Synergist D. Flexor The answer is B. The agonist muscle is the primary muscle responsible for producing a specific movement. The antagonist muscle opposes the action of the agonist and helps to control the movement. Synergists assist the agonist in performing a movement, and flexors are muscles that decrease the angle between two body parts. Question 13. The muscle that opposes the action of another muscle is called the A. Agonist B. Antagonist C. Synergist D. Extensor The answer is B. The muscle that opposes the action of another muscle is called the antagonist. While the agonist muscle is responsible for initiating and performing a movement, the antagonist muscle works in opposition to the agonist, helping to control and regulate the movement. Synergists assist the agonist in performing a movement, and extensors are muscles that increase the angle between body parts. Question 14. A muscle that works with agonist muscle to produce a coordinated movement is called a A. Flexor B. Extensor C. Synergist D. Antagonist The answer is C. A muscle that works with the agonist muscle to produce a coordinated movement is called a synergist. Synergists assist the agonist by stabilizing joints and helping to ensure smooth and coordinated movements. Flexors and extensors are specific types of muscles that affect the angle between body parts, while the antagonist opposes the action of the agonist. Question 15. Which of the following microscopic structures are responsible for the striated appearance of skeletal muscle? A. Myofibrils. B. Sarcomeres. C. Actin filaments. D. Myosin filaments. The answer is B. Sarcomeres are the repeating units within myofibrils, composed of actin and myosin filaments. The alternating patterns of these filaments create the characteristic striations seen in skeletal muscle. Myofibrils contain sarcomeres, and actin and myosin are the proteins involved in muscle contraction. To practice more, Download the HESI test prep from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store.